Today is April 21st. Get the brooms out. Bucks sweep the Rockies in Colorado and did so by a total score of 33 to 9. And yeah, the starters still have the quality start streak. You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Yins guys, thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates and that. My name is Josh and I'm joined as always by my brother Jake. What's up, Jake? Hey man, what's going on? <laughs> it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> and the Bucks have won four straight. Yeah. Five of the last six. Rolling, man. Yeah. Absolutely Love rolling. It. It's fun to watch. No doubt. So today we're going to get into the Rocky series. The quality starts. Sawinski. Uh, Pirates Hall of Fame. Uh, you know what? Let's do the Pirates Hall of Fame right away. Let's just get, let's kick it off with the Pirates Hall of Fame, guys. I'm looking for where in the heck I even wrote that down. Here it is. Dick Grote, Elroy Face, Kent Tocolvi, Bob Friend, Welcome to the Hall of Fame, boys. Yeah, that's great. So I would I, imagine I like seeing this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine that this is probably four names. This is probably like a. That's what we're gonna see from here on out. Yeah. Until it's full. Until it's current. Yeah. I think you're probably, or maybe they'll just do it like, yeah, this is kind of like a pocket of time, and then we'll do another pocket of time. And then eventually, you know what I mean? And eventually you'll yeah. get everybody in there. Um, someday we'll have a conversation about some other guys that can get in there. Uh, not sure. today, though. <laughs> if that's all right with you. I'm good. <laughs> Let's do a couple quick hits here. Little one-liners here. A's moving to Las Vegas. Matter of time, man. It was a matter of time. I mean, so they bought land. I guess it's not officially official, but like, is it, or is it all the way official? I don't really... I don't really know. I just like I saw you put that in our notes, so I I just took a quick peek, and it just says they got land, you know. Right. So Las Vegas has a has a team right now, where their name is just a number, and then they're going to also get a baseball team where their name is just a letter. Maybe. Can we just call them the Athletics and not not do the A's, or can we do a whole name change? Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what the plans are there. You have the 51s, and then you have the A's. Like, we don't even get creative around here. <laughs> Obviously, the A's Maybe they'll call them the elephants. From, oh, my gosh. Could you imagine if they're called the elephants? <laughs> oh, speaking of uh, that part of the country. Las uh, Vegas Dumbos. Yeah. That's, All right, I'm done. You're done, yeah. Uh, Madison Bumgarner designated for assignment. He's owed about thirty-eight million through the next season, so he will not be claimed. So, but somebody will be able to basically sign him for league minimum. I don't know anyone who will. <laughs> he's been awful. He's kind of a grumpy old man at this point. Like he's yeah, always been he's... grumpy, but he's been good. Now that he's not, it's kind of like, all right, man, shut up. He's just out there throwing batting practice, man. That's true too. Speaking of batting practice, um, <laughs> that was a bad. It was a bad uh, segue there. I tried really hard, and then when I said speak, I was thinking of the way the Pirates have been hitting. But we're not there yet. Fernando Tatis reinstated from the suspension today. Joe Musgrove is pitching on Saturday. Do you think the Padres kick it into gear here, or are they just gonna flop? I, I I think they're going to turn it around eventually. I mean, I mean the Diamondbacks are in first right now, and they just got rid of a, re a weak link. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they just I mean, got we'll see, they just we'll got addition by the, subtraction. Yeah, but we'll we'll see how good the the kid is they're bringing up too. But yeah, it's got to be better than what Bumgarner was giving them, or at least the same. And at least you have hope that it could be better. Right. 
Um, <laughs> so the Reds are coming to town. Uh, the game's actually already finished. We're recording this pretty late on Thursday. Bucks got another win. That's why I said four in a row. Um, but David Bell was, you know, relatively quiet in this game, but not the other day. He went off. The Reds were down eight to nothing, and he started yelling that who's the pitcher for the Rays? Fair something? Fairbanks? Fair? I think that's right. Whatever it is. Fairbanks. He starts yelling because he almost hit one of his hitters, and he came out and legitimately during his argument, because he got thrown out, during his argument, he said, how are you going to leave that pitcher out there? He can't even throw a strike. He shouldn't even be in the major leagues. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was something along that line. Like, what are you even doing? Are you the, just the, missing? This guy needs to be not in the major leagues. Like, yeah. He's terrible. I'm just waiting for something to happen this weekend. Ugh. He has to be the worst manager. I would probably say... I don't know if I'd say I have ever seen, but that's because I haven't thought about it very long. So right. let's just go with it. He's There's not another manager in baseball as bad as him. No. So anyway, um, let's get into the games then. I think that's everything that I wanted to bring up at the beginning. Big offense, man. It's so weird when you go onto a situation where your pitchers are going as good as they are, and yet they're also hitting the ball well. Yeah, I said something to my buddy down here. I'm like, we just swept the Rockies. And he goes, yeah, but it's the Rockies. I said, we put up 33 runs in three games. He goes, oh. <laughs> he said, okay. I, I said, I don't care who you're playing. You put up 33 runs in three games. Something's doing, going yeah, good. Four, two of them by 14-3 three, 14, three score. And then the five to three game where we gave up three in the first. Mm -hmm. And then OGV comes back and shuts them down for the next five innings to keep the streak alive. <laughs> you like you like OGV? OGV, that's our guy Vinny, man. <laughs> OGV. Um big offense though, and we talk about that. They did it Monday with a solo shot by McCutcheon in the first and a solo shot by Sawinski off a position player, but 461. Yeah. In the Which ninth. impressive. In between those two home runs, they score 12 other runs <laughs> without any other homers. Yeah. And that's the kind of things that can happen in Denver, right? Right. With that humongous yeah. outfield. Everybody, you know, you, you talk about how like, oh, the air is thinner. Yeah, but they did the humidor thing. So that's gone. I mean, kind of, right? right. Essentially. It's not gone, but it's. It's gone, essentially, right? I don't know that it actually works to a T, but as far as the thin air. But but the worst thing that they did was they were like, well, since the air is thin, we're going to make this field huge. Mm -hmm. And so like, I mean, we there was a couple balls. Well, Castro hit one. 400 and what was it 424 would have been a home run just about, about right. anywhere and it was caught against the wall i they hit one in the, in the gap one time and I, as they as the left fielder was running out there it said 390 behind him and i'm just like jeez so it's no wonder you can get triples so easily there but also the offense can be so big there because outfielders just can't cover that ground right and so they have to play deep to kind of cheat. And then so bloops just drop in because the outfield is so massive that you can get a base hit pretty easily there. And they did that. They had 16 hits on Monday. They had 18 hits on Wednesday. And then nine more on, on the Tuesday game. Yeah, I mean, they're taking advantage of pitchers' mistakes right now. They're they're seeing the ball well. Um did good patience at the plate. They're not swinging at bad pitches. It's just been, and surprisingly, the, about one of the only people that is aren't hitting like extremely well right now is, is probably Reynolds. Yeah. But yeah, he's hitting the ball hard. They're just right at these, people, and yeah, and he's still finding ways to contribute, like you know, sacrifice flies or anything like that. 
but yeah. Uh, getting thrown out of a fourteen to three slobber knocker because the umpire was trying to speed things up. But I mean, that umpire was pretty bad. Um, but you always wait. I always wait for those scorecards because you and I were talking about this, and we weren't really on the same page. And we don't need to get deep into this into this umpire. But he wasn't even consistent. Like the, even his consistency rating was really low. Yeah, I, and it's and like when wait, I was watching it, I thought he was he was being consistent because I felt like he was calling a lot of the same pitches. But a couple of those were so was, far outside. Yeah, and here's no, the thing. Uh, yeah, here's the thing. I, I don't think that the umpire is that bad, and that's been a little bit of a conversation with some people on Twitter too. On oh well, it's actually it's. Umpires are so bad right now. We need to go to the robo umps. We need to do this. I'm not about the robos. I do like the way they're doing it, though. The whole, like, a, a computer calling every pitch, that's not okay. Because it's going to make mistakes, too. And when they did that, they found out it does make mistakes. It makes a lot of them. And umpires rang guys up fully believing that was not a strike. You know what I mean? And they show videos yeah. of them kind of stepping back and, like, and you know what I mean? Kind of all oh, my hands are. <laughs> and they, they do this like half hearted, uh, like strikeout move. And because they know like, Hey, I, I don't really think that was a strike. That was really bad because it's the way that they do it. It has to touch any part of the zone. That doesn't necessarily mean that it was a strike because the strike, it has to touch. It has to go through. What is it? It's the front part of the zone. It has to go through not any part of it. So there's like a weird thing that way. Um, I also think if it bounces to the zone, it, it they it started counting. I don't really know. Maybe not. Maybe I made that part up or heard that from someone who misunderstood. But either way, um, I like the way they're doing it with the challenge. Where the umpire still calls the game, but if Reynolds says that was outside, all he has to do is tap his head and everyone looks at the video board and it shows you live. It doesn't take up that much time. It shows you live whether it was whether it was a ball or a strike. It's like the tennis thing when it goes in or out, right? It's mm -hmm. immediate. It's immediate. It shows you that was outside. I challenged it. I got it. That gives you a little bit of leeway, and I think you only get one per at bat or something like that, mm -hmm. which all he needed was one. He would have been on first if he just had one. Yeah. Well, maybe not because – there was so four pitches outside his zone, and then he threw a strike. So he still would be, you know what I mean? He still would have got a chance. Well, if he would have challenged that first one, the second one, the umpire probably would have caught a ball. Yeah, that's true. So it probably would have Yeah, because the second one, yeah. Second one was even further outside, I think. The first one was high, but the second one was even further away from the zone. But either way, um, it, my whole thing is I don't think that that umpire is that bad like those were really really far outside there's no way he thought those were strikes he literally was doing that on purpose to speed up the game and if I'm a hitter I'm frustrated too now yeah, Gary pointed out to me that he thinks or maybe he heard from the umpire I don't know if these umpires come out and say I threw him out because of this you know what I mean I don't yeah. I don't remember, but I watched it back a couple more times because he pointed out to me that he thinks he was thrown out for throwing the helmet because he threw his helmet down onto the plate. And it looks to me when I watch it like he didn't throw him out until after he said something. Right. So the umpire, like Reynolds only makes one step. The only reason he quote-unquote turns is because the umpire was walking away. So he didn't look back. He was just looking at him for the first time. Usually it's, I can look at you and I can tell you that was a terrible call. And then as I walk back to my dugout, if I turn back around is when they say, well, that's enough. Mm -hmm. And which still, you knew you called it bad on purpose. He throws his helmet down. And it, when I watched it again, the umpire points at the helmet, points at the plate, telling him, you can't throw your helmet like that. And Reynolds probably looked back and was like, did you see those calls? Or, you know what I mean, whatever he said, and the guy threw him out. And so, like, that exchange is just not enough to throw somebody out of a game. That's just not. But 
especially when you knew you called it bad on purpose. You were trying to speed things up. The guy couldn't yeah. find the zone. You were trying to get home because you knew you were going out of town after this. Like, that's crap, dude. Well, I don't think it has to do with getting home. I think it has to do with getting the game over with. Like, not because I want to get home. It's just because this game's already out of hand, which I totally understand in a high school game. These are professional games. These are these are guys who are paid to do a job. Yeah, your you stats are paid count. To do your job. Yeah, but also like for a player, your stats count. Yeah. In high school, your stats don't count. If a scout goes and sees you, he don't care what you're hitting. He cares what he sees. Right. So your stats only tell part of the story, and they know that because they right. know you could go up there and see a guy hit 500, but it's like, yeah, but he's not really that good. You know what I mean? Right. Right. But anyway. Yeah, I just thought it was Bush League. I There was just no need for that. And I wish, and I'm glad, like, I want to stay consistent on this. I don't think we need to know about it, but I like to believe he got fined. The umpire. I like to believe he got a fine for that because it wasn't warranted. Or a fine for calling bad on purpose. One of the two. But I don't think we should ever know. I Sometimes I think we know too much that's going on. I think if a player is fined for something, we don't need to know about it every time. Like, that's just my opinion. You Handle things behind closed doors. We don't need to know it all. Right. The, the less we know, the more we can enjoy the game. Speaking of enjoying the game, there was three great games to enjoy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Jack Swinski has just lit on fire. Yep. I, I, I told you at the very beginning that I thought that he was working on something specific. He opened up his stance. He's trying to see the ball better. And I made the statement here that he's he's watching a lot of pitches go by so that he can understand the zone well. Um, I questioned that theory for a little bit because he was good at getting walked last year, and I didn't really realize that. Um, I think the experiment looks like it's over. And then I heard a post game with him where he said, you know, they said, well, you know, what's clicking? And he's like, well, you know, all the things that we've been working on are like, they're finally catching up with the game speed. And so he kind of said like, this plan is now coming to like where it's, where we're acting on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think like, yeah, because if if you had something specific you were doing, it's going to take time. And we talk about this all the time. I mean, how, you know, as a couple of years ago, Kevin Newman had that crazy spring training and he was like, he changed his stance and he was doing this and he was doing that. And then he got into the regular season and he started struggling and he abandoned the stance. And then he was just bad the rest of the year. And it was kind of like, what was working for you? Because you seem to... to throw it away pretty quickly. And I think, you know, kudos to Jack, whatever he was working on, he just stayed with it. He trusted the process. And he did not strike out in Colorado in those three games. He did not strike out. He walked, um, I don't have the number here, but he walked a few times. And he hit the three home runs. Now, granted, one was off a position player, so you know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah. I get that. It's worth saying. It's not like I'm saying, but if, if it's two home runs, it's not impressive. He still hit two home runs in a game and almost hit another one. And you know what I mean? So, like, it was there. Um, mm -hmm. it, it definitely looks like it's clicking. Uh, you know, I know we're going over this, but he hit another one tonight. He's now at five home runs. His swing is so short. It's It's powerful. The guy has legit power. And I think he may have struck out once tonight, or are we four straight games? He did strike out once tonight, yeah. Um, which is fine. Which is fine, yeah. He goes one for two with a walk, a strikeout, and a home run. I'll take it. Absolutely. And no, okay. I was thinking, okay, yep. All right, so anyway. Um... He's on fire. Who else is on fire? Rudy. Rudy's on fire. 
Rudy went 0 for 3 today, but we're talking about the Rockies mostly. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, and he did. He had a he had a good series there too. Um, two more hits, including the home run on uh, on Wednesday. We talked about the one where he hit all the way to the wall, um, but the one he hit Wednesday, man, that was an absolute bomb. Mm-hmm. Four fifty eight or something, which was funny because there was another ball that that he hit in that game where he flew out and it said 450 or something like Statcast kind of messed up and said, I don't remember. But anyway, he's just, he's seeing the ball better now. He's, um, he's definitely in a groove. Uh, it helps when, you know, right-handed is his strong side and they've been facing some lefties lately and he's taken advantage of it, but his left-handed swing doesn't look all that bad right now either. So right, he seems to be, um, he seems to be clicking a little bit, still hitting over 300. Connor Joe's another one just on fire. Um, had a great series in Colorado. And then carried that into tonight's game, too, when he hit the three-run homer, which was really mm-hmm. the difference. Um, yeah. Or a, a big difference was that was he hit the three-run homer, and then Jack, again, he hit the back, they hit the back-to-back today. And that was all the runs they scored today. So... Just a little bit of that, like you're starting to see guys click, and it's interesting because Reynolds isn't, and right. that's how you do things. That's how you, jeez, dude. Like I, we just keep saying it. These are things that good teams do, mm-hmm. and right now, in this moment in time, they're playing like a good team. Yeah. Don't get me. Don't quote me saying he World Series. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's not what I'm doing here. I understand the ebbs and flows of a season. Mm-hmm. Right now, they're playing like a good team. They're definitely trending that way. Starting pitching has 10 quality starts in a row. Twice through. Nine. Isn't Ten. Nine? They did it again today. I have nine written down because I took these notes after the Colorado series. But another one today from Roanzi. So we've got yeah. 10 straight quality starts. Roanzi was the last pitcher not to have one. So we've gone through Crazy. it twice. It's, it's that's that's just fun. It's 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 exciting to see in Pittsburgh a starting rotation that's actually doing what a starting rotation should do. Yeah. We haven't seen that in a long time. No, I mean, not since the playoff years, really. Mm -hmm. Even then, I don't know if we had 10 straight. I forget what they said the last. Well, they're not using quality starts. I I learned this. You know, quality starts is not like a official stat by MLB. I did not. I didn't either. So that's why... When like Greg Brown talks about this, he keeps saying, and then like Rowanzi got through the sixth inning and he said, here's another one through six innings with, with this. And he's like basically explaining a quality start, but he stopped talking about the runs. Now he's just talking about how many pitchers in a row are going six innings. And he's kind of ignoring the quality start piece of it. And I'm like, I don't think, Contreras' day's done. I bet he comes back out in the seventh, which means he could still <laughs> we could still lose this. And he gave up a run. But or he gave up two runs. Was it just the, did he just give up the yeah, one? He just gave up one run. Okay. He just gave up the one and then hold the other two were Holderman. Okay, so there was somebody on, but Stevenson got out of it. Um but yeah, I didn't realize that that it's not an official MLB stat, so they don't have it. That's kind of weird. Anyway, um, we've got blown up. Like Contreras had that game, he got blown up. Rich Hill had a couple. Vinny had one, and yet this starter ERA is at four seventeen right now, which is twelfth in the league. And after being blown up a few times, yeah. So, like, that's what is it for relievers? Because we got, we took a little hit today on relievers. Looks like the Pirates are sitting at 15th with a 380. 
So, I mean, that means they're 12th, 403 team ERA right now. That's awesome. That's great job, pitching staff. Great job, Oscar Marine. Like, yeah. Let's not <laughs> sleep on I mean, that surprises us, right? Right. And by the way, we're sixth in the league in OP- OPS at the same time. When's the last time you could say the Pirates were tied for fourth in MLB in home runs? <laughs> now, granted, we have 70. 27 and Tampa Bay has 42. Yeah, but they're just unreal right now. But there's three teams. There's Tampa at 42, Dodgers at 35, and then it's Giants at 29 and Braves, Yankees, Pirates at 27. Like that. L- listen to those guys. I mean, the Giants also went on a tear. But those are all playoff teams. Yeah. Pretty exciting. Pretty exciting time. Uh, So, you know, let's just say it. It is okay to get excited about your Pirates. Yeah. It is 100% okay. As a matter of fact, I encourage you right now, get excited. Mm -hmm. Because we just, we're not real sure how long. Today was a big win. Mm -hmm. Today was a big win because we started the 2019 season at at 12 and 7. And the next notable record was 12 and 14. You know what I'm saying? So getting this win right now to go to 13 and 7, sure, you could say, well, it'll just be 13 and 15. That's fine. If it happens, it happens. I don't think that's in the cards right now. I I think they're playing too well for something like that. Yeah. Um, I also noticed when I looked at that 2019 thing that our, our relievers were getting a lot of wins <laughs> at that time. <laughs> um, so it was a little bit different. Plus, uh, Marte had just gotten injured before this streak. He had just gotten injured. They called up Reynolds and Tucker, and it was there was a little bit of a weird. And then after, without Marte, like it kind of it dive bombed for a reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we just lost Cruz. It, it could have done something too. And instead they've responded in such a different way. And it's it's exciting to, to look at. So be yeah. excited about your team. This is fun baseball. And this summer is going to be an adventure, I believe. And it could be, I mean, shoot. They have to play the games. Yeah. I could sit here till I'm blue in the face and say, I don't think this team will continue this all year. I just don't think they will. They're on pace right now. Excuse me. They're on pace right now. I got it. I'll pull it up real quick here. Because I can do this super fast. For 105 wins. They're not going to do that. (laughs) They're not going to win 105 games. It's not going to happen. Right. But you're starting to get to a place right now when you're 13 and 7 where if you play 500 baseball for the rest of the way, you start to realize where you're at there. And you know what I'm saying? Like you're in the mix. Now, yeah, absolutely. Will they even play 500 baseball? I don't know. I saw runs like this coming. I also see bad streaks coming. So have fun when they're on these types of streaks. And just remember these when they're on a rough streak, saying, Now, saying now, because they've done it for, I mean, this isn't long. This is still small sample. But because they did it, this was a tough patch. They had like three series in a row that were really tough. They had to keep playing every single day. And then they had these games at the end of their their big, long 17 days, 17 games against teams that weren't as good. But because of the constant playing every day, you wondered. Right. And they're answering it. Yeah. 
it's fun to it's fun to see your team go out there and beat the teams they're supposed to beat. I think we touched on this last yeah uh, on Sunday too, but this is what you're supposed to do. And and we were I was a little bit nervous about going into Colorado because of that. Yeah, but and what did we say? We said cool okay, you, runs. just yeah, just easy, <laughs> nice and easy. We talked about we talked about Monday's game being, you know, possibly a game that could get away from you. You got Rich Hill going in Colorado. You've got Kyle Freeland who'd been doing who'd been pitching well. <coughs> and when they thumped Freeland, it almost feel, felt like we we got this series at least. Yeah. But it was when you got that game, I thought I think we've got a sweep in the bag. Now I didn't believe that. I mean, you still had Velasquez going and you, you know, you, you hope he's you hope he does good, but you never know there. It started mm-hmm. off a little rough. Um, and, and that, you know, Urania can, he can do that to you. He can be bad, but then all of a sudden just have a good start. (coughs) Excuse me, which we got to him, but you know what I'm saying? And then Gomber seemed like that game we were going to win to me, to me, it seemed like Oviedo's red hot. Gomber is ice cold. Did you see the – I sent you the picture of the exit velocities in the first two innings yeah. after Gomber pitched. It was unbelievable. It's like yeah. it's like nine swings were over 97 miles an hour or something like that. Yeah, that was – I can pull that up right here real quick. Yeah, you talk about punishing a guy right now when he's – or kicking a guy when he's down, I guess you could say. Yeah, you had Connor Joe at 108. Santana 106, Hayes at 106, McCutcheon 106 and 104, Matthias over 100, Connor Joe and another one, Castro over 100, and Reynolds in 95. Like, just crazy, man. And that was just off a of Gomber. Later in the game, there was even more. Castro hit that one. Uh, no, that was, yeah, that was the same game. Castro hit that one to center that was 104. So yeah, I mean they just absolutely lit on fire. But the the thing is, is the Rockies are not playing well right now. And you went in there and you took care of business and you kept playing well. And mm-hmm. it seems like it's carrying into the Reds series as they won tonight. They started off good. Now the Reds did kind of calm calm them down a little bit. You got Ashcraft going tomorrow. That's going to be a little bit tougher of a matchup. You got Hunter Green on Sunday. So. You know, you'd like to take three or four here, but you're going to have to steal one from a really good pitcher. So, you yeah. know, and you got Mitch Keller going to do it too. So I feel like that's a good matchup. You could go into Sunday up against Hunter Green, who just signed a deal, and you could be hoping for a sweep on that day, which would be crazy, yeah, yeah. crazy if they could pull this together. And I'll tell you this, like the Reds have been playing the Phillies, the Braves, the Phillies, the uh, who they just come from, uh, Tampa. So like they've been playing good teams and losing, but they've been playing good teams. So right. you just never knew like, okay, what are they going to look like when we're rolling into here? You know, they might really be ready to, to go, but McCutcheon is playing – we kept saying, guys, listen, he's not going to be the same guy. Psych. Yeah, right. He's been crushing the ball. Just big spots, too. Just- yeah. Yeah. I mean, leadership is everything that we said it was going to be. Everything that they set out and intended for that for that leadership group to be, they've been. Mm-hmm. I saw somebody somebody on Twitter. I, I don't remember who it was. He's like, this jersey gives him superpowers. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's no doubt he's rejuvenated. He's happy to be there. Yeah. Um, but he also believes in this team. Yeah. And I think that is a huge deal. This the the young team reminds him of of when they were young. Yeah. And I think it that I think that helps these guys sometimes. All right, so give me your pick. Do we keep the quality start thing going through the weekend, or does someone somewhere give up four runs or not go into the sixth? 
or or give up four runs because they shouldn't have gone out in the sixth, but but Sheltie <laughs> wanted to keep it going. Or just doesn't go six. I think it, I, I think I think this is the weekend they get snapped. Okay. Okay. I think that I think the Reds have been playing a lot of tough baseball, and and they're they're not a horrendous team. They got some people in them in that lineup that can do some damage. And Jonathan India. Yeah. I like him. I mean, he had, he had three hits today, didn't he? Yeah, I really like him, man. He's a scrappy player. Mm-hmm. He's a good player. I liked him when he came up. Um, and I think that – I don't think that he's as good as he's going to be. Yeah. I know, I know, guys. He's in the division. I see all your tweets about how much you hate him because he's doing good against us. I like to recognize that and not worry about the fact that he's in our division. Like, I yeah. like players. I like baseball. And I, I can respect a guy who's who I like his game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. I whether he kills the pirates or not. I don't want him playing against the pirates, but it's different than like Ryan Braun killing the pirates. Like I couldn't stand Ryan Braun. Right. So that was easy. But anyway. Yeah. That I just I think that that lineup's due. Yeah, maybe. Um, so listen, uh, three game sweep. Now we got the Reds coming to town. We've already taken one. There's three more games in the series. We're looking at, you know, trying to get the series win, trying to take three or four. That's a really good start to doing that. They're playing really good. Gosh. I've just got this tickle in the back of my throat that I can't get rid of trying to guzzle the water. It's not getting rid of it. It's terrible. But I want to ask you about, well, you know what? I got two things to touch on before we close this thing out, all right? I got two things to close on. We're trying to not go super long on these Friday episodes. We know that, you know, Fridays and weekends are a little bit different. And if you want more of us, go go back if you didn't listen to the other one. But So we're trying to get out of here a little bit quicker. But I got a couple things here I want to ask you about. First and foremost, I had this uh, I had this tweet from, from K to the Izzo. Um, who's who's tweeted at us and talked to us before and been part of our discussion here? Um, he talked about he was he brought up the the home run thing where the guy threw the ball and we brought up all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he's got an idea here, and I forgot to bring it up last week, so I'm just going to bring it up right now. <coughs> you know, we talked about throwing the ball back into the Allegheny. Mm-hmm. Well, his idea. And I'm going to do the quote because he starts with patent pending. (laughs) A cannon. No, seriously. If you can bring a sword in, (laughs) there has to be a way to make this happen. Even if it's not the fans that shoot it. But they should be able to throw the ball to a crew member who can launch it out into the Allegheny. Out of a cannon. Even to the extent that it's set up on the Riverwalk, manned by an employee, and the fan can run down and shoot it out themselves. What's your thoughts, Jake, while I cough? <laughs> uh, I mean, I like <laughs> I like the idea. I like where he's going with it. Uh, I don't know if we need to get a crew member involved and all that stuff. And actually, I, 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 like, I like getting the ball into the river. I don't care how we do it. I just think we need to do it. I think a cannon is going to be pretty hard to come up. Like it, it you're going to be hard pressed to be. Oh yeah, we're going to let you shoot a baseball out of a cannon and just maybe hit somebody in the river. <laughs> right, right. So I don't really know that that's necessarily the way to It'd go. It have to be like an air cannon. <laughs> well, that's like what it would the, be. Like the sure, t-shirt toss cat. You know yeah, yeah, I mean? that's true, and that's what it would be for sure. I mean, I don't know what else you were thinking over there. Actual gunpowder. <laughs> like, well, I mean, you got to have the noise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get that. Well, they got the you fireworks the going video, off, right? and you know, you go over there and you fire. I don't really know. I think that the whole throw it into the river thing. I think it has to be like the ball goes to right field. If it's in the Clemente wall, you can chuck it over there. If you're on those seats there or on that patio, that's all real fun. You can chuck it into the river. It'll be fun. Otherwise, I just don't know that you're going to get the, the people are just, they're not going to let things happen anymore. I don't want to shoot no. down the idea cause I love it, but um, right, you've, right. you've got some, uh, 
you've got some details to work out here. <laughs> There's going to be some permits yeah. that are going to need to be signed and, and things like that, I think. All right. So last thing we're going to talk about, we got about five minutes here. Okay. Uh, the new rules that are being tested in the Atlantic League. Have you seen these yet? If not, don't read the notes. Let me read these off to you and get your reaction. MLB is testing the implementation. You know, they always do the Atlantic League things, right? That's where they start mm -hmm. everything. A designated pinch runner. So let that sit for a second. Sure. As of April 28th, they will have this in. Each club will list a player who is not otherwise in the starting lineup. So he cannot be a starter in the lineup. You have a you have a player who's not in the lineup. You designate him as the designated pinch runner. You de you designate him as the designated pinch runner. That's exactly what I said. So you get a base hit. We feel like this is the time. Then we're going to put in our pinch runner. He goes in for you. He runs the bases. You go back into the game. So MLB, you you can never go back into a game. Right. So this is a re-entry. And the guy who pinch ran for you also is still available to actually sub in for somebody later. So he gets he gets once. You only get to do it once. You pick your one spot. He runs, he comes back off, and then he still has the ability to then sub in for somebody later. He's still available. Both players are still available. I don't hate it. <laughs> so the purpose of this is to get more speed into the sport, obviously. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they start creating another. The, pro the problem I have is, do they start creating another, like, um, posi like oh, it's a 26-man roster. We're not going to go 27-man because we're going to let you add Billy Hamilton, even though he can't play baseball. We'll let you put him on the base. Oh, that's that's a bad example. He actually could play a little bit, but you know, there's guys down there in the minor leagues who fly, who just uh, they're just not hacking it, and they could call those guys up and let them run. I mean, you remember how the Royals used Terrence Gore? Mm -hmm. He he hardly I don't, ever I don't played. See that? I don't see him going to that extent with this though, because they're saying you can still put him in the game. You can still right. He should it's not. A yeah, he should just person. fit to twenty six. And yeah. in the tw in the twenty six, and he should have to be used if he if he needs to be. Because um, I I think most teams wouldn't say this is our designated runner. They're gonna say today, hey, you have the day off, and you're gonna be our runner. I don't know, man. Like, I like think hey, that they're hey, gonna Swinsky, pick. They're Swinsky, gonna carry this is your somebody. Day off. Yeah, well, Swinsky's fast, but not like Bay is. I think no, this easily but... goes to Bay every single day. But he's going to play. He, they're not going to keep him off the field just so he can pinch run. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah, going to get his time. Bay's and, probably, and when yeah. he's playing, Bay, and when Bay's, he's playing, somebody I'm just else talking about the speed. Yeah, just talking about the speed, though. They're not going to give it to anybody slower than Bay. So you're you're going to call sure up a will. guy. You're going to call up a guy who maybe he's good at defense. You can use him late in the game for defense. But the idea is to get a guy like Terrence Gore a job. Sure, that's the idea that they're, that they're trying to push, but I don't think that's how it would be used and I don't think that's how it should be used. I think the people who may, are in the major leagues are in the major leagues and you just keep it at that and you just designate your fastest bench guy. Yeah, I I would be surprised. I <clears throat> you know how these guys, you know how these teams run away with these as soon as they implement something they say, "Well, then we're definitely going to exploit that." And I, I would imagine that they would start doing that. And maybe it gets rid of a, a job that maybe somebody could have had. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it was like, I could be on that team because I can actually play baseball. But instead, they went with this fast guy just to use him in critical moments to run. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's a really kind of weird rule, if you ask me. All right. The next one, I think, I, I'm not going to say. The next one, I really want to hear how you feel about this. Well, let me just briefly, uh, they're testing a, a single disengagement. Instead of two, you only get one. That's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, the double hook DH 
the double hook rule will be tested again. Um, they had tested this before, but it was a little bit different. Um, that what the double hook is, um, a team can use a DH just like normal. Everybody gets a DH, right? And so you start your lineup out. You have your DH in the lineup. And you can use that DH in your lineup to hit as long as the starting pitcher completes at least five innings. If the starting pitcher fails to make it through the fifth, then when you take him out, you also take out your DH. And you will have to use either your pitchers after that will hit or you will have to use pinch hitters. So the strategy comes back in if you can't get through the fifth inning from your starter. That's dumb, too. Really? Yeah. Why is that dumb? Because, I mean, like, you either have a DH or you don't. I'm just Okay, that's, that's a sentence, though. That's not a why. It just it just doesn't make sense. It 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 incentivizes your pitchers to be able to get through five innings. It takes away the opener. You completely. should already. Well, yeah. You should already have incentive to get past the fifth inning. But they don't right now. So this is why I thought you'd be all on board on this. You're gonna go back to the days of your starting pitcher being the. Highlight of, I'm going to see this guy pitch tonight. Yeah, and but I, I I don't think they should need this to get that, like, I don't know. I, it's also it's, it's also another way. The other thing that I like about it is it's also another way to get more players active in the game. Because now, like, sure, you got your DH, and, like, there's not very many switches that you make when you have a DH. If you got, if you can't get lot, your pitcher, though, like specifically for the Pirates, that's true. But there are some American League teams. You know this. I mean, that's why the Royals did that with Terrence Gore. He never was used. Yeah. He was very, uh, very rarely used because they could use him in that way. <coughs> and that's just something that I, I kind of like this. I kind of think it's interesting. You reward the teams whose starter can get through the fifth inning. It's not the sixth inning, right? It's not anything crazy. Get me through five. Get me through five, and I get to keep my DH. Also, what does that do? Secondary thing, your best hitter is no longer your DH. You're not going to do that. Your ninth best hitter is going to be your DH. Because now, all your key players that are on the field are going to have to learn how to play a position and be good at it. Yeah, but I don't so know. So you're using your I, DH I've in a liked different the way. DH. I've always liked the DH. I, I think it gets... I, I think there's a place in Major League Baseball for guys who can rake and not yeah, play defense. That's true. I want to I want to see the best hitters hitting. Yeah. I'm... I, I, I'm a proponent for And he DH. still will like it. for, you know, three innings, four innings. <laughs> one at bat. Hopefully not one at bat. I mean, get your pitchers out there. Right. And then, I, and then, yeah. and then what does it do where you say like, yeah, I know he's thrown 96 pitches in four innings. I know he's given up five runs, but we don't want to lose our DH. So we're sending him back out there. Right. Then people start getting hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I thought you would like that because of the, because of the pitcher in you would say, good, they should have to go four innings. Stop throwing 107 in the first inning and pace yourself. No, and I'm, and I'm 100% on board with that, but I don't think you should need incentive. I think you should want to do it. I think you should just have the mentality, I'm a starter, I'm supposed to pitch six innings. Yeah, uh, changing somebody's mentality without a rule doesn't ever work. However, it kind of looks like the new rules they've put in place are already doing this. Yeah. Pitchers are going longer. So they're getting in a groove. So maybe this is not needed, but I like the idea. I like the end goal. I like the end goal of telling them that your pitcher, your starting pitcher now has to work five innings. I like that. But maybe, maybe not quite the way to go. Yeah. 
All right, guys, let's get this uh, let's get this series with the Reds wrapped up, and uh, we'll talk to you guys again on Monday, hopefully with another series win under our belts. Yeah. All right, yeah. guys. Make me make me wrong and keep that quality streak alive. Yeah, that's it. All right, guys. We'll talk to you guys on Monday. Let's go, Bucks. Yep. Let's go, Bucks. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two Bucktober. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck. Cannonball coming. And let's go, Bucks.